Price. Price. As in there's a price to pay. Nothing's free. My brother and sister in Christ, if I told you that him and his family, they grew up in Venice, Venice, Italy. And when I tell you in their day, they are the most dominant travelers of the world. They have their own fleet of ships. And I tell you, they are the, oh man, they are the cargo people of the world, right? In their world, if you will, up in Italy. Man, they got, they got uh, vegetation, they got fabrics, they've got tools, uh, they got materials. Man, if you, they, they, they're the Walmart of your day. They got it all. They can ship it anywhere. And I got to tell you, their best player, as great as their dad is, their best player is the youngest one. Man, it's, it's his ability to understand money, currency exchanges, contracts, the law, or read of people. He just got the gift. And his dad, he tells his dad, look, we're good, no doubt about it. He said, but we, we got to get better because there's going to be people out there that are going to be better and quicker than we are. He said, son, look at us, man. He said, look how far we've grown. He said, father, I'm telling you, you got, here, I love this quote, we can't be neutral. Good quote. Even if I say so myself, I digress. As a result of it, he says, well, son, what do you want to do? He said, I need to travel the world. I need to go see what other people do. He said, son, that's going to come with a price that you can't travel free. It's going to take money. It's going to take time. It's going to take effort. And he said, let's be honest, not everybody's going to welcome you. He said, but it's worth the price for our children, for your great grandchildren. So off he goes. He goes to different countries, but there's one country that's light years. They seem to be doing more things than anybody else. China. Nothing's changed in 2,000 years. As a result of it, man, he goes there. He, when he gets there, he, is, he, he said it's jaw-dropping. He said they got bridges over rivers that expand and are so great. He said, man, they actually raise the bridges so that ships can take the goods further inland instead of everybody having to come and be limited by what you can carry back. He said, and then if they can't get to a city, they built canals. He said, man, he can't get over. He said, they, got a, they have a police department. They have a fire department. And the best, they have a sewer department. A man after my own heart. As a result of it, this is, y'all, this is the year 1800. He is saying that, man, they are turning on a dime. He's not only there, but it's his personality. It's the way he gets along. It's the way he knows. It's the thing he does. He becomes so enamored. He stays there almost 20 years. As a result of it, my brother and sister Christ, he finally comes back home. Man, his dad thought he'd been dead. I mean, let's be honest, you're going that long. He said, son, he said, I basically just wrote you off as, man, it's just, it's just what happened, the world. He said, father, I got to tell you what I saw was life altering. He said, do you know? He said, do you know they got this substance that's, that's black and some of it is hard, some of it is like a liquid. It could burn for days. Oil. He said, man, they got this fruit that falls from the tree. It's the size of a person's head. Coconut. He said, they got this animal that's kind of in the water, in the land. I've seen it eat a whole animal. I bet you if it got a hold of a person, it would gobble them up. Alligator. Oh. Thank you. He said, man, they're, they, they're just light years. He said, but son, look at the price you paid. But he said, but look what I've learned, Father. He said, when, they, when we put out a fire, we got to go get water. We got to throw dust on it. They got a fabric. They throw the fabric on it. It doesn't burn. Albeit asbestos. I get you. He said, but man, I got to tell you, it's just that great. My brother and sister Christ, he was the greatest traveler of the day. Oh, man, please. Christopher Columbus, Really? Magellan found the Straits of Magellan, right? The passage from, if you will, from South America over to the Pacific Ocean. This guy is the greatest traveler in the world today. And the only time we remember his name is when you're at a pool party. And you only know his first name. Marco. I needed y'all yesterday, okay? We died a miserable death yesterday. Man, the price you pay, my brother in Christ, that is the price you pay for that success. That is that gospel. And the good Lord is warning his apostles. Man, the birds of the air have nests. Foxes have their burrows. 
and I have no place to lay my head. So if you follow me, then the price you will pay is sacrifice. There is no greater love in the world than sacrifice. I so love the world, I sent my son for the sacrifice of many. Now stop. This is how it starts. They're in Galilee. They have, excuse me, they got to get to Jerusalem. So let's just, Christ comes to you. We live in Galilee. He says, tomorrow we will head to Jerusalem because that's where we have to go to worship. It is um, about 5,000 miles. On foot, the average person travels four to five miles per hour on foot. A, a little over 120 days, about four months. What a price to pay. My brother in Christ, that's what he's telling his apostles, and that's where we have to go. Now imagine doing that two or three times a year, which is what they would have to do. So they go through a city, a, um, not a city, uh, they go through a county called Samaria. This is why they, everybody gets so indignant because they were overrun by the Assyrians and therefore they, they intermingled. So now the Jews do not like them because they haven't been true to their heritage. They have their own worship, even though they have the first five books, they have their version of it. They have their own priesthood. They worship on the Mount Gerizim, which is a totally different mountain. This is why they don't like Christ because he's going to Jerusalem. Hence, he's a Jew. My brother and sister in Christ, this is why J James and John get so indignant. This is why James and John says, man, call down fire. Look, James and John didn't just do this arbitrarily. It's their heritage. Elijah called down fire. Elisha sent an animal after people that were giving him a, a lot of grief. So it is their nature and their heritage to act. And what Christ is saying is, you can't do that anymore. You've got to turn the other cheek. More importantly, if you're going to follow me, I don't want to hear that you got to go bury your father. I don't want to hear that you got to go tell your folks. He said, you got to stop what you're doing. That might have been okay in Elijah's time, but it's not now because I'm only here for three years, and this is it. You either on in with me or you are out. You are never neutral to me. My brother and sister in Christ, throughout Scripture, I need you to think for a minute. Throughout Scripture, our best players are people that paid a price to be a follower of Christ. If you thinking, man, it's all about the money. Can you imagine your Longinus? Man, do you understand? Pilate can't do anything without Longinus. Longinus is the centurion centurion. You want to go to battle? You want Longinus. You want somebody in your foxhole? It's Longinus. You want to take over another city? It's Longinus. For him to truly say in front of everybody, man, that was the son of God. My brother and sister in Christ, the price he pays. Within weeks, within a month, he's got to pack up and leave. A year later, a year later, they catch up with him. Pilate sends people to go kill him. Do you know what's ironic, according to tradition? They actually catch up with him, but don't recognize him. And then when he's eating with them, because they were in a small town, they're saying they're looking for this guy. And he said, yes, I know, it's me. And they said, well, look, since you were so great to us, we'll just tell everybody we didn't find you. He said, oh, no, you don't. You came here to kill me, and so it will be. Because I'm not backing up from what I believe. They behead him. There's a price to pay for being a follower of Jesus Christ. You think Nicodemus, you think Arimathea gave up his tomb just randomly, and there was no price to pay? Man, you gave up your tomb to the one person they say is not God. Man, he was ostracized within, within a month or two. He's on the lamb. As a matter of fact, we believe he was ultimately martyred. Nicodemus had actually had to leave and go to another country. My brother said, Christ, you don't think there's a price to pay to being a follower of Christ? Nothing's changed in 2,000 years. Every apostle was martyred. And to a certain extent, so was John, who was boiled in oil. And when that didn't kill him, they regulate him to the island of Patmos. Well, now here you sit 2,000 years later. Is it not reasonable, logical, that you and I should pay a price to be a follower of Jesus Christ? Well, let's see. Are you willing to do the little things? To make that sign of the cross clearly and distinctly in a restaurant where everybody knows you're Catholic. Before everybody starts to eat, which is already well into the grace period, you all of a sudden say, can we stop and let's say a prayer? Knowing full well you're going to get the look like, I mean, really? And then all of a sudden you break out the sign of the cross because people are going to say, oh, so you're blessing yourself. You're not blessing yourself. You're asking God to bless you 
Bless us, O Lord, for these I gifts which you're about to receive through your bounty, through Christ our Lord. My brother said, Christ, don't you get it? You're not blessing yourself. You're asking him to bless you. You're letting everybody know I'm a follower of Christ. If you can't do that, then how are you going to stand up against the onslaught of the decision of Roe versus Wade? If you can't stand up when they say, are you a Christian? You say, absolutely, I'm Catholic. For 2,000, for 1,500 years, you're either Jew or you're Catholic. Christian is just a follower of Christ. How you worshiped him was Catholic. It means according to the whole, that if you gather in one place, you listen to the readings, you break bread and you sing the Psalms, you are no longer Jew but Catholic. Acts of the Apostles, it became so popular, it became universal. My brother and sister in Christ, if you and I can't do those little things, if we can't pay the price now, how are we going to pay it later? My brother and sister in Christ, are you willing to pay the price to go to confession? Come to Mass a little earlier so you can have, have it done? Or come here Tuesday or Wednesdays? My brother and Christ, are you willing to pay the price to make sure that your family prays together as a whole, even though everybody's running around and man, time is of the essence? Are you willing to pay the price to get up a little earlier? Because, I mean, God forbid we stayed up much later than we thought. You willing to pray together as a family before you get Husband and wives, will you make sure and bend a knee, literally bend a knee, so that you can pray for you and your family for the protection that they need before your head hits the pillow? My brother and sister Christ, if we can't pay it on the little things, we'll never pay it on the big decisions. My brother in Christ, will you pay the price of staying at work late because nobody else will do it, but yet you're the Simon? Will you stay at work late paying the price because you know it needs to be done regardless of the decimal point? Never tie your name to money because the day you do, you'll be the next name mentioned right after Judas and his 30 pieces of silver. My brother in Christ, are you willing to pay the price to make sure you come to ask a little earlier so you can decompress and listen to the chant? Mother Christ, will you make sure that maybe during the week you go to Mass or what? Maybe, oh God forbid, five minutes in adoration a week? You're on your phone at least an hour a day. My brother and sister in Christ, I'm telling you, you got to learn to pay the price. There's a price for everything. You're not getting out of this world free. The only way you can say you love God is to study Him. And the price you got to give up is time. The more you study, the more you love Him. The more you love Him, the more you'll study the closer you get to Christ and the closer the gap gets, the better you will feel, the better you will understand, the more grace will build on your nature. I promise you, if you do not pay the price here, you will severely pay in the life to come and for all eternity. And I leave you with this. There is a price to pay for success. There is a price to pay for object mediocrity. Make no mistake about it. You will pay a price. One or the other, it might as well be the better. Amen? Amen. You know who said that? Me. God bless you. Please stand.